This video is going to review over mechanical advantage of various simple machines. Now remember that mechanical advantage is abbreviated MA and it's the number of times a machine increases the effort force. The formula for mechanical advantage is resistant force divided by effort force. The reason mechanical advantage is calculated uh, is to determine what exactly is going on within the machine. If a mechanical advantage is greater than one, then the force is increased within the machine. If the mechanical advantage is less than one, then only the distance is increased. A mechanical advantage uh, that is equal to one would only change the direction. And therefore, we can look at mechanical advantage and we can determine how well a machine is functioning. The simple machine that we will be reviewing over is going to be a lever. A lever is defined as a bar that is free to pivot about a fixed point. That fixed point is the fulcrum. And when we look at levers, we can divide levers into categories based on where the fulcrum is located. Those categories of levers include first class lever, second class lever, and third class lever. And again, these are based on where the fulcrum or the pivot point is located. And uh, because of that, our mechanical advantage will vary for each class of lever that is used. A first class lever is a lever that can increase the force, the distance, or neither. It can change the direction of the force. Now, when we look at our lever, we will be looking at the lever with regards to our effort arm, our resistant arm, and our fulcrum. And so, here would be our fixed point, our fulcrum. Here would be the effort or the applied area, and here would be our resistant area. Some examples of first class levers would include scissors, where we have our fixed point or our fulcrum right here. We would have our effort or our applied force here, and we would have our load or our resistance right here. In addition, when we have a diver that is standing on a diving board, their leg is acting as a lever. Where we have our diving board here, we have our fulcrum, we have our effort force, and then of course we have our resistance right here. Swinging a tennis racket would also work as a first class lever because we have our pivotal point, our effort, and then our load. A second class lever always increases the force. And then here we have the fulcrum at one end, we have the resistance in the middle, and then we have the effort towards the end. Examples of second class levers would include a uh, wheelbarrow, where we have the fixed point right here. Our load is what the wheelbarrow is full. And then our effort force is the individual raising up the wheelbarrow. We can also look at a nutcracker where we can see the fulcrum, we can see the load, and the applied force. The same as with a bottle opener. The fulcrum, the load right here, and then the force. Third class levers will always increase distance. And we identify a a uh, third class lever with the fulcrum being at the end and then the effort being between the fulcrum and the resistance. Some examples of third class levers would include when one uses a broom to sweep where we have our fixed point, our effort, and our load. Using our tweezers where we have our fixed point, our effort, and our load, using tongs for cooking, a fishing rod, fulcrum, effort, load, and even a stapler, the fulcrum, the effort, and then the load. Alright, so we've reviewed over 
uh, the types of levers, the first class, second class, and third class. But how are we supposed to remember this? Remember that we're talking about a fixed point, our pivotal point called the fulcrum. We're talking about the effort force that the individual applies to the machine. And then we're talking about the resistance or the load. Well, if we put these in order, first class, second class, third class, I think we can teach you a simple way to remember these. Now, a first class, the fulcrum is in the middle of the load and the effort. Second class, the resistance is in the middle of the fulcrum and the effort. And a third class, we have the effort in the middle of the fulcrum and the resistance. So if you remember the word free, you will have these in order. And those stand for which component is in the middle. First class fulcrum is in the middle. Second class resistance is in the middle. And third class effort is in the middle. With that said, if you identify the uh, fulcrum or the pivotal point where the effort is applied and then the resistance, you should be able to identify each of the classes of levers. So here's an opportunity for you to spot check your understanding of the three classes of levers and then the answers are right down here at the bottom. Now that we've identified the three classes of lever, how do we come up with the ideal mechanical advantage for the machine? Well, the ideal mechanical advantage would be if friction is absent in the machine. We know that that is not true, but if we determine what our ideal mechanical advantage is, we can compare that to the level of efficiency that our machine is functioning at. The formula for ideal mechanical advantage is our effort arm length divided by our resistant arm length. Now the effort arm length must be greater than the resistance in order to multiply the force. So let's look at some problems and see how this would set up. So here we have a problem where you are using a 160 centimeter plank to lift a large rock. If the rock is 20 centimeters from the fulcrum, what is the plank's ideal mechanical advantage? Now when we look at this, we need to sketch out our plank and we've done so right over here to the side. Now we know that the entire plank is 160 centimeters long and we know that right here we have our resistant arm as being 20 centimeters. Now if our resistant arm is 20 centimeters we would also be able to determine that our effort arm would be 140 centimeters and that's because our effort arm and our resistant arm together make up the total length of the plank. Given that we know our resistant length is 20 centimeters, we know that our effort length is 140 centimeters, and we know our formula. And that formula is our effort arm length divided by our resistant arm length. So we take 140 centimeters divided by 20 centimeters and we would get an ideal mechanical advantage of 7. Here we have a very typical mechanical advantage problem uh, dealing with a lever. You need to lift a 150 newton box using only 15 newtons of force. How long does the lever need to be if the resistant arm is 0.3 meters? Now in order to do these problems, I would tell you first to sketch out and label the information given in the problem. So we've done that right over here. Now what we've done is that we know that we have uh, 150 newtons pulling down on the object that we are only allowed to push to an effort force of 15 newtons and we know that the length right there is going to be 0.3 meters. What we need to do is we need to determine this length right there and then add that length to our 0.3 meters in order to solve the problem. So let's identify what we know.
we know that our resistant force is 150 newtons, our effort force is 15 newtons, our resistant arm is 0.3 meters, and we're asked to find our effort length. Now to do so, you'll notice that we have a mechanical advantage of 10. And the reason we have the mechanical advantage of 10 is if we take our uh, resistant force and we divide that by our effort force, we're going to get 10 as our mechanical advantage. So our effort arm length would equal our ideal mechanical advantage, which would be 10, times our resistant uh length. And so we would get 10 times 0.3 and so this effort arm would be 3 meters. Now that we know that the effort arm is 3 meters, we know that our resistant arm is 0.3 meters, we add those up and we would have a total length as being 3.3 meters long. Let's look at one additional lever problem. Three of your friends are sitting on one end of a seesaw. The combined weight of the three friends is 275 newtons. The length from the fulcrum to your friend is 2.5 meters. The rest of the seesaw from the fulcrum to you is 4.5 meters. What is the mechanical advantage and what effort force is needed to lift your friends? Well, I'm not an artist but I have done a little sketch to show the information that was given in the problem. So we do have um, our friends listed right over here with uh, the distance from the fulcrum to the end as being 2.5 meters. We have their total mass as being 275 newtons. And we have from the fulcrum to where you're sitting on the seesaw as being 4.5 meters. Now we need to calculate the mechanical advantage. Now the formula for ideal mechanical advantage is the effort arm length divided by resistant arm length. We know from our problem that our effort arm length is 4.5 and we can see that in our diagram. Our resistant arm length is 2.5. Now we do the math and we would get an ideal mechanical advantage of 1.8. Now, the second part of the problem asks us to determine what the effort force is that needs to be applied to lift your friends. So, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to solve for our effort force. Now, to get our effort force, our effort force is going to equal our resistant force divided by our ideal mechanical advantage. And so we will have uh, our 275 newtons divided by our 1.8 mechanical advantage. And so we would need to have an effort force of 152.8 newtons in order to raise our friends.